I am ready to start working on my rails. I want to, I've got two different types of rail. I've got one which is just a tenon, the width of the leg. So when it comes together, there's no trim or anything like that. The bottom one is going to have a protruding tenon. It's going to have the plywood showing on the, on the outside and it's going to be the round over as I have done on many different projects, more like the Craftsman style where the protruding tenon becomes a decorative feature. So that's what I'm going to do. But I'm going to show you how to make the top one because there are a few idiosyncrasies to that one um, that will help you uh, as, uh, go through the stages. It's the same procedure for making it as the bottom one is. It's just that the bottom one has the added feature of the roundovers, which we'll talk about soon. So I've got my pieces. I've got all these different pieces. What I want is two top rails the same and two bottom rails the same. So I've got enough material for that. The first one is going to be the overall width of my leg frames, which is 25 inches. So this needs to be cut to 25 inches long. I'm going to do that on the bandsaw. You can do it with hand tools. You can do it on whatever equipment you've got. So I need two pieces actually at 25. I'm going to just cut one so you can see how I would address it. So I want to make sure this end here is dead square before I start taking measurements from this registration face down here. I want to make sure I'm square here. So I've got that square. I come down here, the 25. So I'm squeezing here. I've got my square level. Nice light pass, then a heavy pass. And I'm putting my saw cut on both sides just because it's a neat way of working. And it means usually that I don't get the fray on the underside. If this was a sixteenth of an inch longer, it wouldn't matter. Um, but I'm, I'm working accurately, I hope. So now I'm going to use a bandsaw. So I need my mask on. I'm fanatical about doing... The next ones, the adjacent pieces, these are going to go on here like this to form the tenon. So I'm going to cut these exactly to 19 inches this time. That one's out of square. Let's see what we got here. And I'm square on this end, so I'm going to use that. That's my registration face for my square, so I'm going to check, yep. Yeah. So these need to be exactly 19 inches and they need to be identical. With no variance. So whatever I cut this to, because if these are slightly different, then the frame could be out of square or the shoulder line could be wrong. In this case, I've got my grain on all my other rails, on the bottom rails, I've got all my grain running lengthways as though it was a solid piece of wood. Technically, it doesn't really matter in this case, but what I did to economize on my plywood, I've got some grain going vertically here on my rail. Normally, that would matter because aesthetically, it's not as pleasing, but this is the underside of my bench on the top rail where nobody will actually see it. So I'm staying with that. So I want two the same. So it was just an economy, really. Nineteen again. And some of you I know will have equipment that you'll chop these, but I'm going still in with the bandsaw because I find it I like it. So these are the two side pieces that will form the shoulder of my tenon or shoulders. Well, I took those off.
I drifted a little bit there, but I can trim that with the plane. So those are my two shoulder pieces. Yeah, I'm a little bit long on this one, so I'm going to trim that one before I fix that to it. I can do it before or after if I have a shoulder plane, but I'm going to do it before. So what I'm going to do is put these two together, get these over there, scoot up to the wall. There you go. And I'm going to try, am I going to, yeah. I'll have to make myself a little bit of room because I need my Black & Decker workmate to get myself in the right place. I sharp my planes up as well, which you need to do periodically when you're working with the plywood. What you want is four shoulders, four sets of shoulders, exactly the same length or same distance apart, and you want them square. Actually, I'm just ever so slightly out. There I am, I'm dead on. So I know I'm flush there, flush on the underside. And I have a little bit to do at this end. We'll see what we got. That one's square. And the other one is protruding past about, I don't know, 64th of an inch. Feels good. And we're square. So that's my shoulder lines done. So this is my top piece. So these tenons are three inches long. So what I want to do is make a, a line here three inches from the end. And I think I'm going to switch to my knife here get my exact distance off that three inch mark. Then I'm gonna put one of these pieces up against it here, like that, just to see whether I have my three inch mark at this end, and I do. So there I am, I'm on three inches. That means I can Use the shoulders of the planed area like this. That's my shoulder. And the same on this one. Like that. I want to keep these oriented. If I was slightly out, if I turn this around for instance, these shoulder lines wouldn't line up, but they do line up, they're perfect. So I, I don't have to worry about whether they're going to line up. I don't want the screws to show, if this is the top piece and I put this one on here, I can screw through this side, but because it's the top piece, the top rail, I can screw through the inside of this one like this. Uh, I can screw through here because nobody's ever going to see it. They'd have to be on their back underneath the bench to see that. So I'm going to take advantage of that. So I'm going to screw this one here to this one. So the first thing I want to do is drill myself some holes through this one. And how many do we need? I'm going to go uh, about an inch down from each top, an inch up from the bottom like this. And then I'm going in here with two holes. So 
and we drill those. Nice even having this bench top just to work on, really. <clears throat> so there's my knife line. Do I have a knife line here? I do. So this is where we get into a little bit of a problem. Sometimes you get some slippage, things like that. Still got my glue. So this one is going here. Make sure there's nothing in between. The two surfaces. You'd be surprised how much pressure is uh, on these when these screws drive the two together. <sighs> so you could either you can wait for two seconds while that glue grabs, or you can just go for it. It grabs very quickly, this particular glue type, this PVA, this particular make as well. Once it's down, you've got this flush and everything, go ahead and flip over, check yourself for slippage. And now, now I've got two sides of screw here. I've got some at 35 mil and some at 30 mil. So I'm going with the 30 mil for this, then it won't come through to the outside. Moving over, you could clamp this if you feel like you need to. That's that bit. What we're going to do now is where we had that knife wall, we're going to revert to the square and the knife going into that. So I've got my shoulder exactly and I'm coming on this point here on the inside. So I've got the exact shoulder line that I want. I know they're the same length. I know where they need to be. So I've got the exact position for the shoulder line on this one. And that means that I can now register this one onto that knife wall, knowing that I'm dead square across. And what I'm not going to do, uh, what I said I was going to do, I was going to screw this because this was the underside of the top. So I could screw this and so can you. But what I'm going to do is show you what I will be doing on those bottom rails, which is just simply clamping this, gluing and clamping this. So I'm going to do that with this one just to show you how it was done.
and this, this will hold, this is probably, the glue will probably never come undone. I doubt whether it will. Glue is, this PVA is really quite amazing. I feel very happy that we're using it. But what you do have to watch for here is, again, you do have to watch for slippage. I've got this one the wrong way. Oh, no, I don't. No, I'm good. So there, you see, it slipped because it really is floating on this surface. So what I'm going to do is nudge it into place like that. And that means I'm ready to clamp this. So I've got a couple of clamps ready, close to hand at least. And when you're using clamps, sometimes the clamps themselves can have enough power to slip and slide. So Try and keep your clamp as square as you can, like this. Apply a little bit of pressure. And try and keep the clamp head square to the surface so when you do cinch it, it's not causing it to slew out of the way. I'm still dead on my shoulder line there. The second clamp in place on this side. I'm looking at my knife wall. Everything is working fine. Now it slipped because I could see it. I could feel, I can see how it slipped. And actually it slipped along the length. This is what I was forewarning you about. So I'm coming back in. with my, loosen, I've loosened them, and now I'm tapping them to get them dead on that line. Like so. So it, I think I'm gonna put six clamps as I, as that will replace the six screws that I was going to use. And that will give a nice even pressure over the whole thing. And that's how we make the rails for our workbench. I'm gonna do the other three rails, and get them up to the same level. So I'm ready now to start planning up my pieces. Any uh, variance in this level here or under here has to be corrected, but it's not just a question of correction, it's more a question or as much a question of getting everything to look good because we're going to be sanding this in a little while. So any plane, a number four smoother or a jack plane, and start taking down any slight variance in the level which means you've got to check certain things as you're taking shavings off here. So that's my one surface already done. So now it's looking like one single block of plywood instead of three pieces, which I like the way that's looking. On to the other side. And soon you're going to have a bench to do this from. That's the most exciting bit. You won't be wrestling with a the Black & Decker work, mate. Not much to do, really, there. You could break the edges if you want to while you're in this position. Three strokes that way at 45, three at that way. That'll just round the edges. Another area you want to check uh, is indeed that you are square. So what we do here is we just take the square on here and check that this shoulder is square. Why would it not be square? Well because if one was slightly out of alignment and you planed it along that long axis it could be off. So we'll do the same here. Just check yourself. Yeah I'm very nicely square. 
very nicely square. The other area you need to check is that the shoulders are still aligned here to here. Now in my case, they are aligned. That means this one must be aligned. It can't not be. But what if it slipped a 32nd of an inch, just a small amount. Usually that slippage is small, small enough to where you didn't notice it. What you, go, you do is you go in, take the knife for the difference, slice here, and then chisel down with chop cuts, flip over and do the same on the opposite ones, aligning it with the other side, chop cut down to that, and you'll end up with the shoulders on that distance, that distance apart, that length, 30 seconds of an inch is not gonna make any difference to the shoulder lines when you glue and clamp these in place. So that's that bit. Now then, what we've got to do is some notches and I've done one already here. Do we need to lay it out? Not necessarily. What we can do is we can set the bandsaw up directly. So I'm gonna to go to my bandsaw Decide which is the top and bottom if it matters. In this case, it really doesn't matter. So I'm gonna to go to the bandsaw here and set my fence four inches because that's the width of the tenon. So I'm setting it on the back, making a slight allowance for the front teeth because they've got set on the teeth. Then check myself here. I'm right on four inches, I'm locked off. I'm going to switch on, put my dust mask on, and then I'm going to slice through along here. So I'm going to pass this into the bandsaw down here like this until I come right close to the shoulder line and then flip over end for end and do the same again. And then I'm going to cross cut this way when I've done that. So hopefully that will all line up. So I don't really need to lay anything out on the project. I am really well chuffed about this new project. It's been great seeing it come together. And you know, I made a prototype and I saw it before, but now seeing this come together with the filming and everything, getting all the different elements together, seeing the pieces come together. And now I've got a couple of legs done. I'm gonna show you how I make a leg, but you'll start to see how this is, how it's going to go. So there's my bottom tenon. Re almost ready. I'll have a little bit of fitting. In actual fact, it can be too tight. So that one is a little bit too tight. So I'm going to show you how we deal with that. This is my top rail. So now I've got my notch cut out. You start seeing this come together and we've got a really solid workbench. And I think you're going to enjoy making yours as much as I have. I've only used a handful of tools and actually half of those I didn't really need. And um, once you set your bandsaw up, get everything square, you can rely on the bandsaw for cutting everything that you want for that squareness and so cross cutting to length and things like that. So with a very few hand tools, so any of you that are, have been machinists for a long time and you've been using primarily machines, you can do this with your machines. Of course, um, what I'm hoping is this is the preparation for you to get into hand tools. Soon I won't be working on my Black & Decker workmate or on two trestles. I'll soon be working at this bench and that's the important thing. So there's one leg done. I've got two more to do yet. And I'm gonna walk you through that process because it's not complicated. And some of you will already probably have guessed exactly where this is going to go. So what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm going to lay out for these legs. So I'm taking the top two off and flipping them over. I've already worked out where the edges are in relation to one another. In this case, they're all fairly close. So this is the one that's going to have the notches cut out. So this first one, I'm going to 
lay out. I've got the bottom here. This is where the bottom of my legs are. I've already determined that. Go on the nine inch mark there. Make a mark. So this is a, actually, this is a cut line on this one. And what we're going to do is I'm going to go on this adjacent one as well at nine inches because this will give me the line that I'm going to use as a registration line for this piece to be screwed to this piece when I get to it. So this is my layout piece. Then I take my tenon piece up against that mark, that line. I want to exact. If anything, I would make the mortise slightly undersized, maybe just the a hair and then plane the tenon to fit it. I'm going exactly on in this case, because so that's my next piece. So this is, this is the mortise here, uh, bottom of the leg here. Okay, so just so you get the picture, let me get rid of my glue for a minute. From the top of the leg, I am going to come down the width of my top rail. This is just to get, so you get the picture of where I'm going with all this. I make a knife nick on the inside of here, like this, and from that knife nick, I then get my width of my tenon here. Like this. Now I know this top piece is two inches from there and I know this is four inches wide. But what I didn't know without looking at the drawing or whatever, I didn't know what the distance was from here to here. So after I've cut this one, I go back to this one, mark this one directly off it. I've got to allow for this saw curve. So I'm gonna get rid of that one piece first then I can butt this right up against there and I can work along like that. So I'm going to now put my face gear on. I've got the mask on because I've got a beard and it's hard to get a seal. So that's why I'm using the mask, just in case you wondered why. start assembling this whole thing I'm going to be putting these two on after I've screwed this together so this is where I start screwing just as we did other components on this so I'm coming up from the bottom about an inch down from my line about an inch like this I'm going to screw these here so I'm going to screw these in here. This one, I'm going to put one in the middle and I may put one in the middle here. Then when I come to this one, I'm going to lay these out so that I don't hit the screw heads when I come to it. So I've got a good outside face, made sure I've got no um, jigsaw puzzle patches in there that you get with plywood. Ready to screw this together. Make sure you use the right size screw. I'm going with the th one and a quarter inch screws. Making sure they don't come through the outside face. You can move this quite a lot. Uh, when you start cutting down the plywood from the sheet, it does tend to have uh, tension in the plywood from the process of construction. So you will have to move it to a straighter edge. But I found that I, uh, generally, when I come to have put all these pieces together, each piece um, stretch, uh, tensions against the other and I've not really had a problem with anything not coming out straight, so 
It may be to do that I have chosen a good quality plywood to work with. This is a wonderful project. I think you're going to really enjoy making this with me when you get to it. Okay, now these are the next pieces. So these are these are the ones I you don't want to get the screws into the same zone there. So I'm going to come here and here. I'm going to go closer to the end on this one. One in the middle, not in the middle, off centered. So I, I know where everything is, and also the legs are very rarely pieces that you put your you put dog holes in. Some people do though. better to uh, screw each one rather than glue all of them because the glue grabs and stops movement and um, this is the shorter screws these are a little bit longer quarter of an inch longer so they'll go through all the pieces so the three pieces just now see I've got this it's not lined up at the bottom so I'm going to nudge it up it'll just save even a, a small amount saves the plane jarring <laughs> If you want to, you can just dr drive a screw right in between these without drilling the hole. Uh, once you've got that anchored, it's a great additional one. Sometimes you feel like it's not quite together. Just to keep everything clean. And then this last one, this is the trick I wanted to show you uh, because it's something I learned when I was a kid. And what it is, is you need two nails, small finish nails, panel pins, and you need a, a hammer somewhere. And you drive a nail somewhere here let it stay above the surface, same way here. And then a, a pair of pliers. And if you lay the pliers on the side like this, they won't flush cut. They'll leave the uh, nail protruding like that. So I've got that protruding there and the same on this one. Keep the pliers flat against the surface and keep your hand on that nail head because you don't want them embedded in your piece of wood. Then you take this piece, place it in position because this one is going to be 
not, not screwed. This is just going to be aligned with the edges. And this is the one that most likely slides. Tap that one. So now you've got your alignment, you've got your registration. And you've got two little dimples in there from the nail head. So you pop those off, if you can, like that. Roll your glue on. And align those two dimples in there. So now you've got a non-slip component that you can start clamping without slippage.